Hello everyone, my name is Rutu Parekh and I am a PhD student at DLR Institute of Planetary Science, Berlin. Um, I'm part of Europlanet Early Career Committee uh, and at, at the committee we are trying to motivate and understand the uh, struggles which are faced by the early careers in the field of planetary science. So as a part of our um, whole motivation, we thought to uh, design a series of interviews of the planetary scientists as the senior planetary scientists and the researchers in our field and trying to listen their struggle and their motivation throughout, uh, throughout their career and hopefully seeing this video uh, we are um, we may um, trying to achieve that couple of uh, early careers or the PhDs, postdocs or master students could feel motivated via these videos. So today um, we have Dr. Rosalie Lopez with us. Uh, she is a planetary volcanologist and um, she did her PhD from University College London and yes. later postdoc at uh, NASA JPL. She has, tr has, she has worked amazingly on in terms of volcanology. She has published various books, research papers and also involved in various um, scientific communications if I yes. understand correctly. Yes. And uh, she's also uh, received uh, many awards including um, uh, AGU Ambassador Award and Carl Sagan Award which is something really exceptional. Mm -hmm. So I welcome with you with us today and thank you for taking time from a hectic schedule and sitting down with us. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us uh, or like you were born and brought up in Brazil and now currently yes. you are in NASA JPL working on various missions. How the whole, how the whole journey was and how it was for you. Right. Well, I have wanted to uh, work in astronomy uh, since I was a little kid. And my interest started because I followed the Apollo program since I was quite young. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I wanted to go to the moon. I wanted to become an astronaut. But mm -hmm. in, I realized I was female and nearly all the astronauts at that time were male. Uh, I was Brazilian and there were no Brazilian astronauts. Okay. And, uh, I had very bad eyesight Ooh, <laughs> and okay, that yeah. was a no-no. So um, I decided that uh, maybe the best thing would be to become a scientist and work for NASA. And uh, I had uh, an inspiration when Apollo 13 happened and the Brazilian newspapers carried a photograph and a short article mm -hmm. um, of a woman called Frances Northcutt, yeah. known as Poppy. Poppy. And, uh, uh, and I saw her there at Mission Control and thought, she's there, and if she's there, I can be there too. Yeah. Uh, eventually, I went on a different path. I didn't work on Mission Control, <laughs> but um, uh, that was a big motivation. And uh, in fact, uh, Poppy and I met for the first time wow. a few months ago, so 49 years after that article. <laughs> that's, that's amazing, yes. like, you know, seeing someone who motivated us, yes. it, it's yes. something really exceptional. Mm. So um, tell me something, so when you started uh, working in the volcanology, I assume there were not many people who were going in this field called planetary volcanology. I, I don't yes. think it used to exist in, in those days. So how did you manage to go in this field with who nobody right. heard about and thrive well, through it? Well, I, uh, uh, I went to England from Brazil to mm -hmm. do a de degree in astronomy. And I was doing my final year project in astrophysics and uh, I thought I was going to go in that direction. But I had a class from a planetary geologist mm -hmm. uh, at the University College London, where I was. Um, uh, he was Dr. John Guest, and he had come from volcanology into planetary. And I thought the class was fascinating. And, uh, and after a few weeks uh, into the class, uh, he didn't show up. And a postdoc showed up and said, um, Mount Etna in Sicily erupted and the mm -hmm. professor had yes. to go. And I thought, that's really exciting. <laughs> that's much more exciting than sitting there in an astronomy observatory and freezing. And uh, <laughs> I, I don't like cold weather. <laughs> uh, and I thought volcanoes, that's really exciting. 
So I very much enjoyed the class and I asked him if he would take me on as a really? graduate student and he did. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So you had really amazing professors and teachers who yes. did support you throughout this, you know, your, your idea and they motivated you. And um, yes, even though at first he said, mm, I never had a student who wasn't a geologist. But I suppose you can do something. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's <laughs> wonderful words of yes. motivation. That's yes. that's really amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, throughout your career, I uh, we know that you have almost visited uh, all the volcanoes all over the mm -hmm. almost well, let's and say. on I have visited active volcanoes yes, on every on continent. That's okay, a, that's, that's a claim to fame. <laughs> Not many people have done that. That's really uh, like yeah. a huge number. Mm -hmm. So, um, so th and you did study also the planetary volcanology because you were involved in this IO mission. So, yeah. what was the most significant uh, movement, or I would say the significant discovery throughout your professional career, which has like you know literally motivated you till now and like you know you are still oh, associated I, with this I, field. I've been very lucky that uh, you know, I have worked on the Galileo mission I actually started out working on Mars, mm -hmm. uh, Olympus Mons, Mars and Earth comparison and um, uh, physical models of lava flows and then I got to JPL and I got to know people from the Galileo near infrared mapping spectrometer team. Mm -hmm. And they offered me a job uh, to uh, lead the planning of their IO observations and the analysis. And uh, a very important moment was uh, when um, uh, we started finding uh, hot new hotspots. Mm -hmm. and, uh, at, and at the beginning of the mission, uh, one of my colleagues said, do you think you're going to discover a new hotspot that's an active volcano wow. on Io? Because Voyager had found about a dozen, and, you know, and there had been a few more found by ground-based. And I said, well, uh, if I'm very lucky. And by the end of the mission, I had found 71. And <laughs> 71 active yeah. volcanoes. Yeah, new active volcano. Uh, not new, but previously unknown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it was very funny that that um, uh, actually oh. eventually got me on the Guinness Book of World Records, which I never thought I would be in. But okay. I had a postdoc from England who knew someone who worked for Guinness okay. and he made the contact and that's how, um, how it happened. So yeah. <laughs> that was very funny. Uh, but I have had great moments after that. I joined the Cassini mission and seeing the surface of Titan for the first time, uh, it, it was amazing. Titan was the, the largest unknown surface yeah. in the solar system okay. uh, up to Cassini. This is this really like amazing. Like just hearing you, I'm feeling like I, I can feel that excitement. Mm -hmm. So as you said, you are also associated with the different um, missions throughout, throughout your career. So. Yes. What was the, you know, how did you deal with those tough times? Because we always have, you know, mm -hmm. pressure to deliver, to write the research paper and to, to put it forward. Mm -hmm. So how was those tough days? How, what was your thought process during those times? And how did you deal with that? Well, uh, we all have tough times. And, um, uh, you know, and I would say that, uh, you know, persevering is the most important thing, determination. Uh, I have known people who were extremely bright, mm -hmm. but just didn't have the determination to uh, to carry on, yeah. uh, and they dropped out of the field. You know, and other people who might not have done the best work, but you know, they kept at it. Yeah. Um, so um, uh, the most important thing is if you really want to do it, mm -hmm. and you have to really want to do it, you don't give up. Uh, you keep going and uh, everyone is going to have, uh, you know, papers criticized, yeah. proposals rejected, and also don't take it personally. Yeah. Uh, my okay. PhD advisor uh, actually uh, recommended uh, that all his students uh, read some philosophy of science, mm -hmm. and particularly Karl Popper, and he really emphasized that science only moves forward yeah. when we find that the previous theories, mm -hmm. you know, uh, were not quite right. Okay. So the previous work is not quite right, so uh, that science is going to move forward. So what you have to do is to mm -hmm. understand that, you know, you, you do the best work you can at the time with the data you have, but uh -huh. if someone <laughs> comes along and says that's not quite right and this is better, 
you have to feel glad yeah. because science is progressing. Okay, so, mm. so according to you, the key is keep moving forward in and yes. there has to be one day we'll, we'll find a way. Yeah. That's, right. that's really like inspiring and I, I was really, really inspired by, by all these uh, stories which you shared. So just now we are moving towards the uh, end of the interview. What uh, tips you would like to see, uh, give our you know, early career uh, to survive through this, this field and mm -hmm. what, because uh, as we know that not all the days are same for us. Some days we really achieve something, the other days we just do the, you know, the, the, the paper correction and like doing nothing. So at the end sometimes we mm -hmm. really need something to keep our motivation high and push hard. So mm -hmm. what you would like to just share from, from your I, I think the, the key thing is that you have to love what you do yeah. to put up with Should the I? boring days and the <laughs> and the tough times and the yeah. times when you have to deal with a lot of administration and the, uh, so it's the determination but that comes from love of what you do you know you have to be passionate about it and whatever your passion is in life you have to follow it and then you're going to be happy so yeah this, as you said the fo follow follow our passion and then yes. we may have our our paths in future and we never know what's 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 there in the future for us so yeah I, i'm really glad that we could have you know sit down mm -hmm. and you could take time from a busy schedule so thank you so much for coming over here and sharing your part and your opinion regarding this field to the early careers and to motivate them yes. thank you so and much good luck to all the early careers <laughs> thank you thank you so much